like to welcome each one of you here this morning as we're here in God's house to give worship and praise to him. He's the one that we need to do that for. But it's good to see everybody here. Hopefully you've had a good week. And hopefully God has been good to you in whatever you have been part of this week. So I thank you. I'm sorry I don't have a mask on, but I suppose my voice would carry enough, but I'm not sure. So I try to stay with the microphone. I don't see any. Right now, I don't see any guests that need to be, but if you do, if you would stand and introduce yourself, it would be good. But I don't see any. The announcements today is food pantry day if we plan if you have an announcement you'd like to come come up here and uh, I'll let you do that after I get done making the food pantry Sunday today Tuesday commission meeting so everybody that's on a commission fine Wednesday the youth meet Next Sunday, baby dedication and parent consecration. And it says Sunday school resumes next Sunday. So it'll be a change, it's been a long time. And uh, personally, I have missed it. I don't know whether everybody has or not. Additional announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, first, Christmas in the Park fundraiser is going to be different this year. Um, Jake the Great will be amazing us with his skills and illusions on Saturday, September 26th at 4 p.m. Please bring your lawn chairs, blankets, money, <laughs> and be amazed. We may be having some baked um, goods for sale that, at that time. We don't know yet, but that's still in the works. Also, Christmas in the Park will be different this year as well. We are still trying to work out logistics, but it is going to be a drive-through here at the church. Um, we're excited about it and hope to bring that excitement to the community about the birth of our Savior. So look for more updates on that. And one last announcement, Officer Appreciation Day is the first Saturday of October. And in lieu of recent events, it's a very much needed thing this year for the officers. Um, it's grown quite a bit, but they anticipate probably record-breaking attendance due to the way things are right now. Officers are down and they really need some uplifting and this is a good outreach to show them that the community appreciates them and supports them and God loves them very much. So we will have, if you'd like to help with funding of it, um, we'll have a container out in the narthex the next two weeks, um, the next two Sundays. So if you'd like to help contribute and let officers know how much we do appreciate them and not everybody's against them. Thank you. I guess if there's any other announcements, they're probably in the bulletin. You can look on that and see. But I guess that'll take care of those. So we'll have the prelude and we'll continually worship as we listen to the prelude.
you pray with me? Father, I just thank you for this time that we can be in your house to worship. It's, uh, you know, those weeks that we didn't have, it was really hard. I know you can see and listen to it on television, but to me, there's nothing like being in your house and having fellowship with others that, want to, that know Christ. And I thank you for this time and the people here, so just continue to help us as we give honor and praise to you, God. And I pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you can stand, will you please stand as we have our opening hymn. Please join me in singing on page 290, Fill Me Now.
his message by the Matthews is coming forward for the children and of course we know the children are to be remained in their seats so far. I don't know what they'll do next Sunday but that's the way it is this Sunday. Good morning. How is everyone this morning? Good. 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 I brought a couple helpers up here right. with me today. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to play a little activity to get us started. And because the kids are up here and we don't have a lot of kids here, I'm going to ask the congregation to help out. But you don't have to move. You don't have to get up. I think we'll be okay. So <clears throat> it's like a call and response. So I'm going to say a popular phrase. I'm going to start it. And when I point to you, I want you to finish it. It's not too difficult. I think you should know most of them. So here we go. To be or not to be. Oh, see, I knew you'd be good at this. Um, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I feel like Pastor Stan is the A plus student up here. Nice. Wow, very good. Um, Luke, I am your father. Oh, very good. Um, an apple a day keeps. Slow and steady. Wins the race. Oh, you guys are so good. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. But I have loved your life. Oh, I was hoping that would be the last. All is fair in. There's no place like. And the last one. Sticks and stones may break my bones. All right. Good. So Maya, I'm gonna, I want you to come here because I'm going to ask you a question. So that last quote, six sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Do you agree with that? No. Why not? Because if someone says mean words to you, it doesn't hurt you. Like when someone throws something at you, but it hurts your heart. It hurts your heart. So it hurts you in kind of a different way? All right. All right. Good. So, just as in this game, most of you know these popular quotes because we remember words. We remember things that people tell us. For years, words will stick with us, whether they're positive or they are negative. So, Brandon's going to help me with an illustration that I bet a lot of you have seen before, but I still think it's a really good one. So, Brandon, come on up. squeeze out a big blob of toothpaste on that plate. Just squeeze it out, big blob. Oh, more than that. A big old blob. All right, now that's coming out pretty easy, isn't it? Good job, good job. Okay, now Maya, your task, Brantley, I'm going to ask you to hold this plate down. And Brantley, your, or Maya, your task, I want you to put the toothpaste back, oh, don't do that. Put your toothpaste <laughs> back in the tube. Put the toothpaste back in. They're waiting. Could we do this a little faster? Oh my goodness, Maya, hurry up. <laughs> Pastor Stan's going to preach. Okay. Obviously, the toothpaste is not going back in this. I always love doing this um, illustration with my students when I had younger students at the beginning of the year because it showed that the toothpaste comes right out of the tube with no problem, just squirts right on out. Kind of like our words do sometimes when we get upset. Our words just come spewing out of our mouth before we think. And even though sometimes we try and take them back, we try and put them back in that tube by apologizing, um, by asking for forgiveness, like Maya, you might get a little tiny bit back in that tube to take those words away, but it's not going to be, it's going to be messy. It's going to be messy, and those words are still out there. They're still out there unspoken. Now, I have one more quick illustration, and you're going to have to bear with me because I taught fourth grade for 13 years, so I love Indiana history. It's like my thing. So I want to give you one more real life example about how words hurt and can cause huge problems. So Brantley, come on up here. I want you to see if they can guess who we're going to talk about. So I want to talk about a great leader that we once had in our country. Now, pretend this is a lot taller. I didn't have a taller one. So what great leader do you think we're going to talk about today? Lincoln. Very good. Thanks, buddy. So. You can learn. So, 
President Lincoln, in his younger years, you may not have known this, but President Lincoln was a little bit of a hothead. Um, Abe had a little bit of a temper, and he really got upset with people who had different political views than him. Now, we know nothing of that in today's society. Um, I always say that Abe would be really bad in today's world if we had social media, because he'd probably put it all out there on Facebook and it wouldn't be pretty. So Abe was a real hothead, and in his young days, and he used to write these scathing letters to politicians that he did not agree with. And he would hear something, a speech, or a policy that they were discussing, and he'd sit down at his desk and he'd write them a letter and just told them basically how awful of a human being they were. And one person he did that to was Senator John Shields. He did not agree with John Shields' policies, and so he sat down and he wrote one of his nasty letters. Put it all out there. Well, John Shields, Abraham Lincoln did not realize this, um, but he was a little bit of a hothead himself, and did not take well to that letter. And so, Senator Shields challenged Abraham Lincoln to a duel. A duel to the death. And Abraham Lincoln, although he spewed a lot of nasty words, he didn't believe in violence, and he did not want to fight this duel, especially not a duel to the death. And so he contemplated, and he was really worried, but his honor was more important to him, so he was going to show up for the duel, but luckily, Senator Shields' advisors talked him out of doing this duel. Abraham Lincoln walked away from that duel unscathed, but he learned a valuable lesson that his words can create a lot of conflict. And he always took that lesson with him. So fast forward to his presidency, and now we're in the Civil War. And during one of the battles at Potomac, General Meade, who's in the center, I know this is a little picture, General Meade was given the orders to put the South to rest. They were gonna end the war at the Battle of Potomac. And General Meade had the opportunity to do that. The South, they were surrounded. Lincoln gave the orders and Meade disobeyed. For whatever reason, he thought he had a better plan that did not work. And the Civil War did not end that day. Lincoln was furious. He was furious about this. And he sat down to tell General Meade exactly how he felt. Going back to those younger days, he wrote a letter. And he was going to send it off to General Meade to tell him how he felt. Well, Abraham Lincoln had grown a lot as a person and had realized that words do not solve problems. That hurtful words do not solve problems. And so, after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, that letter was found in his desk. He never sent the letter. He never sent that letter. He learned to write his words but not necessarily send them. To get it off his chest, but not to put them verbally in front of somebody. And if you have any other history buffs in here, like I love social studies, here is just a piece of that letter, the last paragraph that he wrote to General Meade. Again, my dear General, I do not believe you appreciate the magnitude of the misfortune involved in Lee's escape. He was within your easy grasp. You've closed upon him. Would, in connection with our other late successes, you could have ended the war. As it is, the war will be prolonged indefinitely. If you could not safely attack Lee last Monday, how can you possibly do so south of the river, of the river when you only have two-thirds of the force that we had before? It would be unreasonable, expect, and I will not expect you to have any success, therefore. Your golden opportunity is gone. I am distressed and mean immensely because of it. I beg you not to consider this a prosecution or persecution of yourself, but I have learned that you heard of my dissatisfaction and I thought I should kindly tell you why. President Lincoln. This week as we go forward, not just for the children, but for all of us, I really challenge you that when you are upset with somebody, maybe a colleague or children's parents, teachers, write it down, write it all down. You can be upset, you can have those words, but then I'll challenge you, throw it away, or like President Lincoln, just tuck it in your desk and let it go. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much um, just for giving us the opportunity to worship in person today. Lord, I just want to bless each and every one of, I would like you to bless each and every one of these children here today. Um, I just pray that they have a wonderful week at school. If they're upset, um, if they're mad or angry, I just pray that they stop, they calm down, 
Um, and then just try and do what President Lincoln did, write it all down and then put it away and you'll take care of the rest. In your name we pray, amen. on me breath of God. Have you ever felt the breath of God? One of the best ways we can do that is open the scriptures and God breathes on us with his words. I, I ran into, I think the other week I was talking about, I didn't think it was anything asking the Lord for even more of the Holy Spirit and um, Adrian Rogers disagreed with me. But I can win because he had died a couple years. <laughs> but, but he was right. He said, no, you get the whole spirit. He said, the idea is you pray that you give more of yourself to the spirit. So when we think of breathing on us, God's doing his part. It's us that need to do our part. Well, it's good to see all of you here this morning. And those of you who are watching by uh, technology, we welcome you too. Uh, we will go through our prayer requests. Uh, the Clayton family in their loss of B, her funeral was yesterday. Uh, Jean Mishler's funeral was yesterday. Max's family got to be home most of them with him, so we're glad for that. Um, here's an update on Chloe. She's a friend of the Griffith family. Uh, if you remember, she's 16 and she had back surgery on Thursday. Everything went well. Uh, but the tumor and vertebra need an analyzation done. So they're asking for some specific prayers. Now the doctor's got enough margin so Chloe doesn't need chemotherapy, pain control that her nerve might have been irritated, her back brace is fixed, it's too long, and she will eat enough today so that she can have her IV removed. So those are some specific ways you can pray for Chloe. Please continue to pray for volunteers to serve our uh, children as Sunday school teachers as Sunday school starts and 
Uh, let your friends know that Sunday school is starting if they don't happen to know, and we'd like to build up the children's department again. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. That, that God is with us. And uh, God kind of agreed, I guess, with the Jewish people that he would be at the synagogue uh, and that he would be in, in the temple. But he talked about a time when he would be with everyone and he could be with everyone at the same time and we're living in that time. The Holy Spirit, if we will allow him, will baptize us into the body of Christ and will begin to teach us and lead us and show us your perfect ways. Lord, you didn't need to do that. You really didn't. And you know that more than we do. But you loved us enough that you knew we couldn't make it to heaven by ourselves. So you paid the price with your dear son, Jesus Christ. His blood for our sins. And yes, he gave up his life. He was dead and he was buried and resurrected. And now he's is at the right hand of the Father, waiting, waiting for instructions of what God wants him to do next. Lord, uh, when we think of people who are going through trials and struggles, we think of the uh, Clayton family, and we also think of the Mishler family. And just be with them, Lord, as they get used to life without B and Jean. And Lord, uh, for young Chloe uh, to have all these things going on must be so discouraging. But hopefully, you know, we can pray specifically. And you ask for specific prayers. I mean, lots of times we like to say, Lord, just bless everybody. And that's good. But specific prayers are even better. So we know how we can pray. I'm reminded as I look at my list that uh, Bob Clayton will have cardiac tests are done tomorrow. We pray for Bob. We pray for his doctors that they make a wise decision whether to do the ablation or whether to insert the pacemaker. We know that you're good, God, and you can take care of that, and you will. And Lord, uh, we have prayed for different needs, and right now we need Sunday school teachers, and we just pray for, for them, uh, pray for the Sunday school classes that they will come back, and uh, if not, then we can maybe find out what we can do to, to help that happen. And uh, we just, you know, give this whole COVID problem to you. I saw, Lord, a church got fined $10,000 in California because they had a hymn sing. It's crazy. It is a crazy world out there. Lord, even in that crazy world, you have put us. And we pray for those who are taking your word to other countries with more success in some places than in the U.S., and as in our case, the, the Nigerian brethren are ready to send missionaries to the United States wondering what in the world has happened to the Mother Church. We are part of that Mother Church and we wonder the same thing. So Lord, help us be wise about what you would have us do and be with the leaders of the church, the district leaders, Torn, we just lift them up. We also lift up those who may be in foreign countries today, or maybe they're in our country. The National Guard surely has been utilized a lot lately, so be with them and with the police officers, Lord. I think maybe two lost their lives this week that I can think of right now. And it, it's just to watch some of the rioting going on, it just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, but that's what is happening. Lord, um, we just are thankful for all the good things that have happened. If we look back this week, we can think of them. It's easy to get bogged down with something currently and drags you down and makes you feel bad. But when you look at life overall and what's promised for the believer, how can we be sad? 
Um, you, know, you keep our hearts singing, and certainly you want us to be joyful always. And again, that's possible with you. Lord, just uh, bless our time together. Thank you for the children's story. It just fits perfect, and, and the whole message today fits perfectly, <laughs> even though it was planned many months ago. So, Lord, be with us as we worship. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all the bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Thank you, Bob. From my childhood on, it was very important for me to please my dad. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't please him nearly as often as I should have. And it wasn't necessarily that I was disobeying him or anything. It was just I couldn't do things the way he did. Everything kind of came hard. That was before I knew I was a master of disaster. I know that now. I told someone the other day about the only thing I can do is uh, maybe be a preacher and a butcher. <laughs> Um, boy, I'm, I'm lost. As a fellow works on our house and says, now this is going to look this way and that way, I say, tell Nancy. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So if I try to please my earthly father, why would I not try to please my heavenly father? As we look at grieving the spirit instead of pleasing, who would intentionally Intentionally do something that would bring grief to the Lord God. But we're going to see this morning that it happens. And we're going to see how we can help it not happen as often. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray that this message finds ears that are open, hearts that are soft, and hands and tongues and feet ready to go to work. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you remember last week, we were talking that we had started a little bit about to putting on and putting off. So I wanted to back up to 24 just to give us a reminder. And that was a put on where we were reminded to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay. Now you might think, how does that look? What is that going to look like? How can I measure where I am? Am. Okay, well, we look at verse 25, and this is a take off. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood 
and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Speak truthfully. Do you speak truth? I pray you do. Do you know you never really have to worry uh, when you tell someone uh, your story or you tell somebody, uh, maybe you don't have to be called in for a court case. If you always tell the truth, you don't have to worry about it. Now, what did I tell this person? Now, what did I tell that person? So definitely, you know, you have those issues going on if you don't tell the truth. Another thing I want to point out is this is talking, this says that we're supposed to speak truthfully to our neighbor. Now, we might think our neighbor is everyone, and sometimes our neighbor is, but this says because we are all members of one body. So it's talking about your neighboring believers. And a lot of the scripture talks about that. Certainly, we help out other people as we can. But especially we help out other believers. Okay? Uh, taking off. The idea, again, is that you've been out working in the garden or maybe crawling under a lawnmower and you look a mess. And someone gives you clean clothes, you just kind of whip those clothes on and put them on top of the dirty stuff? Not really. You're going to take off and put on. And that's this take off, put on idea. All right? So it says, in your anger, any here, anybody here doesn't have anger? I challenge you to kick something in the dark like I did the other day. I challenge you to be going down the road 60 mile an hour, someone pulls out in front of you 10 mile an hour and goes 10 feet and stops. We have anger, don't we? We all have anger. But we're not supposed to sin with that anger. Well, how, do you, how don't you sin? Well, you don't become angry. Or, or, I mean, you don't lose your temper. You keep it under control. Okay? Um, and ideally, when we keep it under control, we can let it go. And then we're reminded not to let the sun go down while we are still angry. angry. Okay, number one. The Bible doesn't say that we can't feel angry. Believers handle anger properly. They do not let it build to, boy, I'm not reading good today. Uh, not let it build, uh, where are we at here? Uh, to pride. Do you know there are people who are proud of their anger? I really tore off so-and-so, let me tell you. Or it can turn to hatred. I hate that person. I, I don't care. I will hate him till I die. Or self-righteousness. I have a right. My rights have been harmed and hurt, and I have a right to be angry. Okay. How many times when we talk about anger, anger acted out, do we go back to Jesus and the merchants of the temple? My mentor said this week, I'm tired of that. He said, people say they go back and well, Jesus got angry and he tells people, you ain't Jesus. <laughs> so we let the anger, most of the time, if you check out your anger, it is because of something that has happened to us. Where it'd be much better to hold our anger for when God is dishonored, when people are wronged. Number two, believers become upset by things, but not to the place where it affects our family, loved ones, friends, co-workers, or our health. When I came home in a bad mood, everybody knew it, and I did not put up with anything, and I, oh, how I regret that, okay? Do you realize that our health is affected. You ever been so upset your belly is just churning inside out? You can get ulcers. How many people have had heart attacks or strokes because they got so angry in the midst of their rant and rave? Some even die. Now it's not sinning uh, or uh, dealing with our anger before the sun goes down. Have any of you ever found it's easier to wait to another time? If you're angry with somebody, well, we'll just wait till next week. Then you see them next week and think, wonder if they're angry at me. Well, I'm not going to get too close. I don't know. 
And, and you can carry that out sometimes in years. It's not going to get easier. Don't let the sun go down. That's great advice for husbands and wives, but also for all believers. All right. Another thing, if you hang on to that anger, 427 says that we give the devil a foothold. Do not forget that the devil does not have God's qualities. He is not all-knowing, everywhere present, all-powerful. And when we say to other people, boy, I am so ticked, and this really ticks me off, we're telling Satan and his cronies exactly where to attack. If we get rid of that, then that seals our body somewhat against Satan. Now, remember, again, this is written to believers, and in 28 says, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands that he might have something to share with those in need. Now, I read that, I thought of 2 Thessalonians uh, 3.10. It says about for even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. And you might say, well, you know what? I don't steal. Do you ever steal time from your employer? Maybe you have an expense account and, and you can you know, buy something or that maybe you shouldn't have, but you can put it on the expense account. Sick days. Sick days. I mean, I know some people can get sick days and sick days they can use the personal days. I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm talking about when we pretend to be sick and we are not. The when the tourney is, the national tourney college, um, you know, it's, what what is, what is it now? Sweet 66, seven, I forget where they are. They say work drops off like crazy from Thursday on for that weekend. And they just most companies just figure out they're not going to get any work out of their employees then. You see, we can learn from this, and I think there's two lessons we can learn. One is that poor believers, there are poor believers out there, maybe not in the U.S., but that steal because they don't have enough for their family to eat. And, and sometimes they go to jail for a long time. And I'm, I mean, I know there's punishments. You have to have punishments. That just doesn't seem right. But you know why? Another reason it's not right is that some of us who have more could have helped. And, and the bigger lesson, I think, goes to the church. When you have a church that's doing okay uh, and, and, and people have problems, we can help. Now, again mainly other church members. One of the questions I like to ask someone when they come for aid is, what church do you go to? Oh, we don't go to church. Well, how comes our church is good enough to give you money if you don't go anywhere to church? And, and then some say, well, I went to church so-and-so, they won't help me anymore. That's another sign that we have to look at, okay? But there are times that there are people in our midst that have great need that we could help. Uh, one of the put-ons that I find in another book of the Bible, Galatians 6, 2, says that we should carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. You remember Jesus said, you'll always have the poor with you? That's what he's talking about. You, he could have fed everybody, but he didn't. He said, the poor are always going to be there, but, but believers who need help, we should help. And we know that the Israelites got in trouble because they charged fellow Jews interest, and we really shouldn't do that. And when you give something away, give it away with the idea you, you can lose it, because lots of times it doesn't come back. I, I imagine that people mean well, and they say, we'll pay and stuff, but lots of times that doesn't happen. And so when that doesn't happen, don't get upset. Okay, moving on to the 29, the first part. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Oh, my word. <laughs> I was so guilty of that for so long. Some of the jokes I told were horrible. And I, I, I just don't know if I want to say like jokes, but I would use jokes that had a dirty connotation or not. 
I'd tell the joke to Nancy, and she'd say, well, I don't understand anything wrong with that. Well, <laughs> that's good, <laughs> because she was a lot different than I was. But, uh, you know, you say stuff, and, and uh, you laugh a dirty way, and I had lots and lots of that coming. And if you tell the world that the unwholesome talk has to stop, they'll laugh at you. They'll laugh at you. So would you want Jesus to hear everything that you say? No. But guess what? He does. He does. Not only that, he knows what we're thinking. Being in the body of Christ helps us approach lost people. And foul language will usually turn people off. Now you say, well, that's how they talk. Yeah, but if they're looking for Jesus Christ, if they're looking for a difference, they're not looking for the same old, same old. They can, they can swear, their buddies can swear and say all that stuff. They're looking for something different. Therefore, if you try to uh, be one with them by doing what they're doing, they aren't going to be looking at you for Christ. All right, we have a put on in the next part of verse 29. But only what is helpful, and that we speaking, only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Heidi Matthews, I have in my next note, words matter. <laughs> words matter. The words that we say to one another have the power to build up or tear down. And God can work through our words to help others to bring his grace to them. You know, Heidi asked her kids about those words. What, what words do you remember the adults in your life using with you? You ever called a loser? Worthless? Stupid? I mean, there's memories that bring smiles and there's memories that bring tears. But we are called as believers to use positive, encouraging words that build up, that make one feel worth, valuable and worthwhile. And I'm not talking about giving every child a, a trophy, you know, that everybody gets the same thing. I mean, we have gone way, way down the river with that one. You know, We've got to learn. Our kids have got to learn. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And that's whether you're a Christian or not. So, let's use positive. Let's use encouraging words that build up, that make people feel valuable and worthwhile. I would like you each to take a spiritual inventory of your speech. Are your speeches, are your talks, Building or demolishing? And with the Spirit's help, commit to being the kind of person that encourages, that builds. Number three, be careful about what they say. Okay? No gossip. No foul language. Is what we have to say true? I've used this before. Kind necessary or helpful. Put it through those pillars, folks. If not, bite your tongue. Here comes another put off in verse 30. We're not supposed to grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you have were sealed for the day of redemption. You remember the Holy Spirit is a deposit in our spiritual bank account, our spiritual account, Proving that God will save us. Okay? Do you realize, I don't think I did, that the Bible does not speak about the Holy Spirit getting angry? We hear about the wrath of God, but have you ever heard about the wrath of the Holy Spirit? I have not. The strongest response of the Holy Spirit we find in this scripture is when he is grieved. When he's saddened, if we go against the Spirit's leading, it hurts him.
we can get, a, I think, a small understanding if uh, we look at number four. Do you remember how it felt when family or friends fight? Especially if you're trying to get in the middle and trying to get it stopped. When believers quarrel and hurt one another, we upset the spirit. And once again, like last week, the Holy Spirit gives believers a privilege and a responsibility. Our responsibility, folks, is not to disappoint the Holy Spirit by the way we live. Our privilege, of course, is our promised future. For through the presence of the Spirit, believers, again, are sealed for the day of redemption. Before the words escape our mouth, are we using them to help somebody or hurt somebody? Are we building up a person or saddening the Holy Spirit? Number five, our actions, words, thoughts, and behavior impact and affect God the Spirit. So that thinking of that in our head make, is a powerful motivator to do right and avoid evil. All right, some major put-offs from verse 31. I'm going to look at them separately. Bitterness. Bitterness is a spirit that refuses reconciliation. I don't care how many times they say they're sorry. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You, they will never make me not like them. Anger. What is anger? It's a continuous attitude of hatred that usually remains bottled up inside. And it's brewing just underneath the surface. Rage is what happens when anger bursts out. Or a quick temper. Lots of times for selfish reasons. And, and when it comes out, it explodes. And it is used by people in evil ways. It's uncontrolled. Continual uncontrolled behavior. You ever seen it? Probably so. Ever done it? Probably so. Okay, now brawling, you think about a fight, knocking each other down or whatever, but in this sense, brawling is angry people determined to be so loud that everybody will know why you're angry and what your anger is about. Now, I do that not trying. My wife says, shh, 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 people are watching you. You know? But that's not... What we should be about either. How about slander? Destroying a person's reputation using lies, gossip, and rumors. And then the last one that we got to get rid of is malice. That's doing evil despite the good that's been received. I mean, what God has done for us, and then we're treating other people terribly. It's an, it's an evil planned attempt to harm another person. Most all of these things that we need to get rid of destroys relationships. They are the fruit of the unbeliever. And we become believers, that kind of thing has to go. And it will with the help of the Holy Spirit. Number six, believers are in their body of flesh, okay? We're still living the way as we're a part of the body of Christ. We're still polluted by the world's words and actions. We are not perfect and occasionally slip into our old nature. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, but every believer's goal should be drawn to Christ and his ways. 
All right, so we got rid of some stuff. We got to put on some stuff. Keep it even here. First part of 32, be kind and compassionate to one another. If you don't know it yet, I think you will. I think you do know. Number seven, love brings more love. We see that in pay it forward, don't we? Love brings more love. Love changes everything. Love immediately puts into practice the keeping of the commandments. What do you mean by that? Love, will love let you covet? Will love let us steal? Will love let us commit adultery with the neighbor? No, because love changes everything. For our new self, our new self that we get changes everything. And we become kinder one to the other. Let's put on something else in the next part of, of 32. Forgiving each other just as in the Lord Jesus Christ, God forgave you. And you know when God forgives it's gone forever. But let's look just a little bit at forgiveness and how forgiveness changed a little bit over the years. Under the law, Jesus said this, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men your, their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I, I've talked with some people about that. And they said, well, I guess I'll just take my chance because I'm not forgiven. I'm not going to forgive anybody. Okay? In the Lord's Prayer, what does it say? You know, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. All right. That changes under grace. Number eight. Let's do the old. Forgiveness under the law. We will be forgiven as we forgive others. Grace has a higher standard. We forgive as Christ has already forgiven us. Well, you say, how's that? What does he do? Well, Colossians 2, 13 says, When you were dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your sinful, uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave Past tense, us all our sins. Colossians 3.13 Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Do you get the truth of number nine? God forgave us first. Now as a result of our newfound relationship, he wants us or expects us to forgive the people we need to forgive. Do that today. Don't wait. Don't take it home. Don't go to bed on it. Get it straightened out. You know, it, how can we say that we believe Christ has forgiven us? And then say that we can't forgive anyone else. We are, we are given a ministry of bringing people to Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.19 For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. See that person? Well you might think they're a pretty good person. But they had a child out of wedlock. No, what good does that do? To tell somebody that. And he gave us a, a wonderful message of reconciliation. Simply say yes to the finished work of the cross. Salvation equals faith plus nothing. My goodness, as, as we look at the world today, we can think of awful people. Enemies of society. Will the Lord forgive them? You bet. In a moment. Matter of fact, he already has. Why? Because of his sovereign grace. Now, if it was left up to you and I, we'd keep him out, wouldn't we? 
But God moves and thinks differently. He said, I died for that person. Do you know how much blood and how much pain it took for Christ to uh, forgive the sins of the greatest scumbag you can think of? Just as much as he paid for you. Me. Number 10. The grace of God has forgiven our neighbors, friends, and family members. Why can't we also forgive? Why would we grieve Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm sure that all of us have grieved the Holy Spirit from time to time. Maybe we're grieving Him today. But Lord, we just ask that we would wake up and, and see that we are a new creation, a new being. And to, as I said, not ask more for the Holy Spirit, but continue to give areas of our life to the Holy Spirit. Maybe the hard heart is the last to go. We, we, we have a power over people if, if they owe us or we think that they've done something against us. It, it gives us a power. But you take that away, Lord. You make it all even. And, and, and I'm reminded of, of the, what Jesus said about the guy who was forgiven like a million dollars. And he went and threw somebody in jail for about a thousand. And that, that's just not the way you work, God. And you took the forgiveness away from the guy that owed a million, and he had to go to jail too. And, and we may not understand everything in the Bible, we can understand that. We owed a million dollars and got all scot free, and then we messed up and have to pay it all. Probably couldn't even pay it all if we stay in prison all our life. Lord, that's part of the new way. If there's anyone here who has not accepted you, I know most have. But I don't know who's listening or where you're at in your life. Just come talk to me if you want more clarity on this, if you want um, a little bit better understanding. Lord, I love to tell the story. I get excited to tell the story of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Verses 1, 3, 4, 5 of Blessed Quietness.
close, uh, we got a call from uh, Shelly, I think, that one of the youth is having surgery right now to repair their tear duct. They were bitten in the face by a dog. So let's go to prayer. Lord, we just ask you to be with the youth member or youth member who has been bitten by a dog. I mean, we don't expect that. I mean, dogs are fun to play with and things, but it happens from time to time and they can do a lot of damage. So we pray, Lord, that they can get that tear duct fixed and that they can uh, just you know that, that this person will do really well. Um, so we never know, Lord. Um, dogs can hurt us. We can hurt each other. So as we go from here, Lord, may we think how it is that we can live life and um, not, not tear each other up, not knock at each other down, but uh, by giving and taking, build each other up. And all God's people say. Amen. Amen.